Welcome to this latest episode of Southpaw, right hand drive conversion, restoration. Now it's getting there. The car's looking really good. It's on all fours now. Um, and uh, it's looking quite slinky. I like it. Anyway, um, so in this episode, you're going to see lots of stuff. And you're also going to see various different uh, continuity issues with my hair because I've had it chopped. Is there a bald patch? No, there isn't. Um, but it is very great. Good call, Tim, on the heater matrix. I pulled it out. I've attached up my test rig, pumped it up, and it holds very little pressure. Um, so um, these, luckily, um, are slightly easier to get apart than the, um, the later ones because there's just a series of screws around the edge. I'll just take one end plate off. It should be able then to slide the entire uh, matrix out. Right, very, very, very quick um, heater fix matrix fix jobby here. Um, first and foremost, I think I can see where the water leak has been on this thing. It wasn't actually the matrix, it was the bottom pipe on the heater. And it looks like it's been squirting water into the matrix. You can see there the pattern of sort of rusty water going in. And what I drained out, the radiator was all full of rusty water too. Now, what I'm going to do next, I've got some foam. It's really quite dense foam. This doesn't soak up water. And I've got some rather marvellous Martrim contact adhesive. This stuff um, deals quite well with uh, working in um, hot situations. So very much I I've used this stuff in the past for gluing headlining new headlining fabric um, to an existing board but what I'm going to need to do is to um, cut each one of these um, uh, foams to go on to these areas that one wants foam on both sides that's the main vent that covers the air intake at the top then we've got um, the foam flap here for the um, for the, the hot cold the matrix goes down here hot cold goes there then we've got the interior exterior sorry interior screen and floor and then this one up here um, is a little, little flap that does the, the face vent. <clears throat> so this one in the middle here should be okay, but I'm going to have to take it off and just give it a brush over um, because it's got a different type of foam on it, um, but it does need gluing back on because I think the Spanish heat has, uh, has, has knackered it. <laughs> Right, so you see me assemble the thing, now I'm just going to do a quick test, make sure first of all that everything works, so the fan works. It works. Right, that'll do that. Just going back in the car after I've had a nice cup of tea. So what's that? That's half past midday. Okay, now so it's two hours to get that done. Two hours to get that done to where it is right now, and that's ready to go back in the car. It's about fifteen minutes to put it back in the car. Um, cup of tea, and then we'll crack on. We my promoters, rear one. Front one, bit of a cock up on, but uh, we'll go into that in a minute. Uh, so rear wiper motor, here's the one I took off the car. That's the state it was in, uh, with the back cover missing off it. That's the state of the front of it. And it just looks like it has completely seized up and then melted. So the electrics have all melted on it. But that was fun. I just think it's seized up up there. And then got very warm. So replacement motor, just a straightforward fit. Pop it straight back in again. I'll put some lube on the uh, on the shaft. Spliced in the ignition switch. I've used the original 
early style connector and just spliced it onto the loom and I've done exactly the same thing, this light will fucking behave, done exactly the same thing with the wiper motor. So wiper motors aren't actually available anymore so it is no harm at all in just chopping the loom and using butt connectors to splice the same colour wires to the same colour wires and put the original style connector on there and make wiper units a little bit more available. Um, minor irritation, not critical, not terminal, but minor. Um, battery's the wrong fucking way around. That's the positive terminal there, and that's the negative terminal. Um, and normally the Type 72s that these things come fitted with, they're the other way around. Um, I don't want to turn the battery around because then the post will be too close to the front panel. That then becomes a, a danger. I've done the positive terminal. Um, um, ain't pretty. I don't like the way that the fusible link is bending back on itself. I'll, I'll look at that tomorrow. But at least I've got the positive terminal on now. Protect it with that for now because I can't find anything else that's suitable to do the job. Uh, we haven't got a battery clamp. I need to get one of those. Right, let's see what happens when I connect up the terminal. Oh. We has power. He doesn't have smoke. It lives. That's a bit of a uh, Turin dot as well there, just for shits and giggles. Right, I think that at six o'clock is <coughs> me done. Until tomorrow, I'm going to go through and do a full electrical check tomorrow. Um, right, where are we getting to? Um, first and foremost, the uh, the original dash dimmer is fucked, so I've got another one. Um, lights go on, there's no noise, but there's no lights on in the interior either. Um, the noise at the back was coming from the rear wiper motor. Now, when I plug this thing in, You'll notice that the temperature gauge matches out and also the fuel light comes on. But so do also the lights. Now, as I use the dimmer, it's dimming all sorts of weird fucking things here. I'm not quite sure what's going on, but there's a cross somewhere in the circuit. So I'm going to have to go through and double check where these crosses are occurring. This is weird. Right, I think I'm getting to the bottom of this now. Um, dimmer for the panel lights. First of all, panel lights aren't on. Operate the dimmer. Can you see that? Headlight thinks it's a um, panel light. I've got a crossover. So when I'm trying to diagnose electrical faults, as I have been, um, sometimes you have to read the manual, I'm afraid. So basically what we're looking at here is the circuit for the um, ignition switch, main lighting switch, and the dim dip switch. All of these things aren't working properly. We take basically a drive or a feed from the fusible link, which is orange and red. Here we are, orange and red. And fusible links are these fucking things here. I don't like them. I prefer the solid state kind of fuse box type of thing. And I may well end up, um, I've got one at home, I think. I might even have one here. Comes out of a Discovery 1 or even a Discovery 2. Um, but I know how to splice these six fusible links into the fusible links that you get in there. <clears throat> and it works beautifully on my Range Rover um, because I had a problem with a couple of these. And the, the, the issue is not so much with the fusible link, but with the connection where it joins onto the main wire. Um, and I don't want to be changing the length of these fusible links because it's the length that dictates how much current it can carry. So you don't want to start fucking around changing these things. You might as well just cut them out and just connect these wires directly to the battery if you're going to do that. Um, so the problem is when they start to go dry inside these connectors here or inside this giant connector here, they just turn to powder um, because the high resistance or the dodgy connection which creates the high resistance uh, generates heat and the heat melts the copper. Um, in the wire and also melts the uh, fusible link. And eventually you end up with one strand of copper carrying 12 volts. So you end up with obscure and um, odd electrical issues where you're picking up 12 volts with no load, but as soon as you put any load on there, it just drops to zero because there's not enough current um, to maintain the 12 volts. 
So that's what they are. They're fusible links, and they, they're kind of they're, they're normally in a big old sock, which I've got around here somewhere. They, they, these these cover them up normally. Um, I don't like them because you never know when they're fucking blown or not. Um, right. So fusible link, orange and red, goes into the main light switch. Okay. The light switch then has a feed off for side lamps. So side lamps should come on regardless of anything else. As long as that is feeding up and the switch is working, side lights should come on. The problem I was having was that the dipped lights were also coming on. Okay, there was all manner of weird issues as you've seen. So I followed the circuit down then. Okay, so let's look. We've got a headlamp relay. Well, we check that out. And off the headlamp relay is always an earth. Now, on Range Rovers and on Land Rovers and on any car in general, you need to have a, a complete circuit. And these ones here and these wiring diagrams, what they do is they, they, they number the key components inside the circuit. So what we've got here, um, the, these symbols mean just go to H1, page 2, and you continue the circuit there, blah, 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 blah. blah. But this thing here, this is a ground distribution. So there's the earth the symbol there. And basically what it's telling me is I need to be looking for position E201 for right-hand drive. So off I went to the manual, found E201, and there's a whole shitload of stuff that attaches onto E201. Um, that one goes to E100, E100, E101. So <clears throat> that there is E100. That there, the one we, we forgot yesterday, is E101. Those are the grounds for the front lights. E201, bless its cotton socks, is there. Big old fucker. Huge, great connector. Okay, so I grounded that against the steering column support because it wasn't grounded, it was just dangling. Um... I don't know why um, it was dangling. I think I thought it was the alarm connector, um, but it's not. So, <clears throat> I've now earthed that, and now I've earthed it. The lights are working. So we've got interior lights. I haven't got all of the interior lights. The light on the clock is working. You can see that down there, and the clock is in fact working. Um, there's a few switches, nods and sods down here that are working, and the dimmer works as well on it. So when I roll the dimmer, you can see the lights going brighter and dimmer. There you go. Happy days, eh? And at the front, with the ignition off, we have got just the side lights. Spot on. It's exactly as it should be. Um, and at the back, we have just the tail lights and, of course, the number plate lights. You can see that one's brighter than that one. But, yeah, the number plates are working as well. Number of lights are working as well. Number plate lights. So when I go to the dip switch or the dip beam, no additional lights come on at the front. If I pull the flasher, it works. Okay? It's all a little bit over the place at the moment because I haven't screwed everything together. And the telltale on the dashboard's working for the flasher as well and goes off when it should go off. Okay, so that's all working. So we put the ignition up to position number one and all remains exactly the same. Because position one should not have any current going through to the relay for the headlights. That's the relay there, that fella. Put to position two. Whoa, all of a sudden everything lights up. Look at that. And we're on dip beam at the moment. So I push the lever forward, so we get full beam. Okay. And we've got an ignition light on as well, which is good news, because that wasn't working before either. Oh, I'm in reverse gear as well. Look at that. So the reverse gear lights work as well. So let me take it out of reverse. I've not connected the starter solenoid up yet. Um, so it's not going to start, even if it wanted to. Um, I've disconnected the wire on top of the low coolant bottle um, because the loom is working, but the plunger on the bottle is not working. So that's not a huge issue. We can see that the low fuel warning is working. Um, and we're not grounding out on the temperature gauge. And I'll, I'll show you how to t test the gauges. The one that's slightly irritating is the oil pressure light's not working. Um, and I think that's an issue with the switch, but we'll come back to that one in a moment. So, now we've got the ignition on. Let's look at the auxiliary um, position. So, we have got front fox, and the telltale works. Front spots, which is that one there. There's no telltale in it. I can fix that, that's not really a problem. But the front spots won't work until I flick onto full beam. And now all of a sudden we have got front spots working on full beam. 
How about that? Nice bit of driving lightage there. I've not connected up the wing indicators yet, but they will work. And at the back, we should have the fog lights on, which we have. So that's all working. And all of this, all of this aggravation was because that single earth, Earth 201, wasn't working. So all the lights are off now. Um, hazards. You can see them working at the front corners there. And at the back, which is good. And with ignition on, indicators should work too. And we've got the telltale on the dash working as well. That's interesting. The telltale is on the same side. Right, I need to look at that, find out why the um, um, telltale is the wrong side for the indicator. Not getting a whole lot in the wiper department, am I? Or no rear wipers either. So no wipers. So that's the next thing I look at. Also, no blower. So the blower, the wipers front and back aren't working. So that's the next thing I look at on the uh, on the on the on the diagram. Door looms aren't connected at the moment. Well, not connected on that side. They are connected on this side, but the mirror switch doesn't seem to work. But then, it's a really fucking manky mirror switch, this one. I'll see if we've got another one in the box of bits. I thought we did have another one. But this one's horrible. It's not good. It just feels like it's just full of sand or something. Which it probably is. Right. <clears throat> so, that's good news. Right, let me talk about um, the temperature gauge and the oil pressure sender. So, what we've got here is that's the temperature sender for the engine and down here somewhere we have got the oil pressure sender which is right down there earthed onto the block so we'll pull that up there he is go find my test cable right so what's useful is to get a little um test lead a couple of crop clips on it and all i really do with this now is just balance him on here balance mr phone on there pull the temp sender off the uh, sender itself, earth it. That's all you need to do, earth it. Because that's all that sender does. The sender isolates the feed to that cable, and as the temperature rises, it, it works with resistance and other witchcraft and uh, wizardry. And when I turn this ignition on now, I'm expecting the temp gauge to max out. There we are, maxed out. All right, so we know that the wiring is working. If, when I eventually start it up, um, you don't want to know, then I know that it's going to be the sender and not the wiring, because the wiring's good. Right, let's do the same thing now with the oil temp, sorry, the oil pressure. So it's going to earth that bastard. So I've now earthed, completely earthed that uh, little fella there. Turn the ignition light on and, it, and you'll see the oil light comes on as well. That's all it is. So, oil pressure sender is knackered right we've been having some fun with the wipers darn things right okay so what i've had to do is extend the loom right out from the loom because the connector is quite tight to the loom so i've extended it out using the correct colors and i spliced in using a big terminal block because i was struggling with all the shit um, to the early type connector rather than the late type connector Then I found that the column control that's on the car doesn't work in fast speed um, and also it wasn't working at all. So nothing was, was live in it. So I went through the whole fucking system, found the delay unit which is down there, the red one down there on the end of my fingertip, um, checked all the voltages, that all found to be okay. So I thought, this is fucking weird this. So I pulled the wiper motor and everything out. This is the wiper motor that I put in. No. This is the wiper motor I put in. Now, believe it or not, this motor only works on full speed. It doesn't work on any other function. So park doesn't work, intermittent doesn't work, slow speed doesn't work. It only works on fast speed. That does not work on fast speed. <laughs> so, I've got another one out of the unit. 
This one works on fast speed. And that's how I found then that the original motor was working on fast speed. So I'm thinking, well, maybe there's something odd between old and new wiring. No, none of that shit. So then I put another motor on. This is the one that um, I got from my, my, my spares man. Um, I didn't actually fit this because it had the same connector on it as the one that was on the car that I put on the car the first time round. So right hand drive, it's not original to the car, it's just a right hand drive motor and it only works in high speed. Fucking thing. So this is the other one, right? This is the one that I bought last week. Thinking it had a better connector on it. Now what we get, fiddling around with the spare control, is I get slow speed, if I can get it to turn on. There we are, slow speed. Woohoo! And fast speed but no park. Now if I put it down to the intermittent position, it just runs. Could be easy to go through there. It just works. It just it, it doesn't doesn't ever do anything other than just turn. So if I turn it back to the off position, no park. It just stops. So battling with this fucking thing. So then I thought right bollocks to all this. I can't have two faulty bloody motors. So that motor comes off, and then I got the original left-hand drive um, uh, motor. Even written left-hand drive on it, you see. Covered in sand and shit. Looking properly fucking chonky. So what we'll do is we'll balance that up there. Let me just plug the connector into it. Right, it's changed nothing. Just plug the connector in. Still running exactly the same colours through the terminal block. There you go. All beautiful. Let's go and test it out. Right, so first and foremost, if I balance this up here, you can watch it turning. Right, so let's go for, um, should we try a bit of slow speed first of all? Yeah, fast speed? Yeah, off. Off, parks. So park is working on it. Right, let's go down to intermittent now. Intermittent works. <laughs> Wash works. And when I just do a quick wipe, it works. What the actual fuck? So, sorry about that. I seem to spend two hours pissing around with wipers and connectors because I had a dodgy wiper control here on the car. Unfortunately, these things happen. Just wouldn't work in high speed. I had two ship wiper motors from my spares man. One doesn't park and one doesn't work in anything other than high speed. Um, and the original motor that came on the car works. So I'm going to take that off now and put it on the car. I'll get on with this fucking game. What a joke. Right, okay, what I'm also going to do is I'm going to butt splice, <laughs> butt splice these together because I know that they're right now. Um, and then next time there's a problem with a wiper motor, we know that the wiring's good. But that was fun and games. I've basically been using the trusty multimeter to chock block. I'm not going to leave it on there, but the terminal block chock block things, they're very, 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 very good for checking voltage at specific points in the whatever circuit. So when I've got it turned, the wipe, ignition's on, wipers are off. That's the park, okay? That's low speed, that's high speed. And that is the intermittent but the park needs that one to be connected as well because what happens is park sends a voltage up that cable when it comes down that one that was dead until the park function is enabled then that one becomes live and that's what then parks it <sighs> bag of shite and the color codes are exactly the same between old and new <sighs> fucking thing Anyway, we're there now, so what I'm going to do now um, is enjoy the rain. I'm going to pop this motor off here and fix it onto the uh, right-hand drive wiper motor. Sorry, wiper motor, wiper block. And the other thing I've done, been doing with this is I've been loosening up the um, ends. So I've been squirting loads and loads and loads of penetrant in there, and I'll lube them up as well. They're working quite nicely now. They were a bit stiff, but they weren't totally gone. 
So I'm going to bolt the motor onto that and then we'll fit it back into the car and we'll test the fucking thing. Then I can put the deck on. Woohoo! All done. Even got the little earth cable in there, look at that. It's all working beautifully. Took the old uh, non-functioning high-speed wiper out. I'm going to find out what the fuck is wrong with it because it annoys me. Should be able to fix that. Um, all you actually have to do to get these things off, by the way, if you noticed, um, but they clip in to the centre hub and there's two catches, top and bottom there. Push those together, slide the fuck around. It's self-enclosing. The little bit down here, that's a fibre optic cable that goes into a bulb at the bottom. It traps in using that little white catch there. Um, Good news. Um, the engine cranks. Um, I haven't managed to start it yet because I need to sort all the fuel out. Um, fuel hoses out but basically what we've got here um, is I've recovered the alarm unit from my old Range Rover the green one I broke um, can you see it no you can't see it let me put the camera the other way around sorry guys you have to put it with fuzzy not too bad today right so this is the alarm unit it deals with the alarm it deals with the immobilizer and it deals with the central locking all in one big hairy unit and it screws up onto the rail along here it's got to drill a couple of holes for it <clears throat> now um, basically, um, I've tested, been through the whole test book, um, and every test has passed, except for that is now in the way of things. So um, I'm not going to go into too much detail about um, how to bypass it, because I just think that's naughty. Um, what I'll do is I am going to, um, I meant to bring it th 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 this week, but I'm going to get hold of the, um, the original alarm fobs that went with this unit. Um, probably need to put new batteries in them and see if we can get the, the actual alarm to disarm. If I can get the alarm to disarm, then fantastic. Um, and that will be the easy way around it. I won't need to do anything because the alarm will be disarmed. And I can provide the fobs um, to my customer. Um, and uh, if it ever arms itself, then you can just disarm it by pressing the fob. Um, so that's good news. Pleased with that. All of this electrics down here can all go back onto the column again now because I know that the relay's working. Um, and it's this box here that's causing my problems. Um, Dynax to that area. Um, there was no sign of any rust up here, but it's, there's, there's a semen on the bottom, um, pardon the expression for now, um, that can um, rust out. Um, there's no sign of rust on this thing. Um, mine has started to rot out along the other side of that seam, along the inside. So ultimately I need to get the deck off that and do the same thing, um, clean up where the rust has come through because this panel here, you can see the seam there, this panel here is one piece and obviously the, the deck goes down. That wasn't very nice, was it? Um, right, so deck can go on now. I'm gonna get that on. That's another job done. And then I know that the, uh, <coughs> I know then that the wipers are all in the right place. I didn't go up, right up to the top of the deck. Paint's good up there, no sign of any rust. And I didn't really want to start spraying too much Dynax into the heater box because that's just going to smell nasty. Right, so where's the deck? There he is. I'm not going to bother doing anything with it, it's just going to go on the car. Um, all of the bits are in there for the foams, that's all good news. It's got all its clips and bits on it, so I'll put it on. And the deck's on. Lines up nicely with the doors as well. Considering that the uh, deck came from a completely different car. I don't know if you can tell from the uh, different colour. There is a dent here. Let's push that out. I'm going to work on that. You can see here where it's gone flat. So I'm going to see from the inside if I can just lever that piece out. You can see there also it's, it's crimped. Nothing serious. I really wanted to get the bonnet on though before I start fucking around with it too much. Um, electrics. Well, we're moving forwards. I've got the front bumper corners on. They look most handsome, don't they? Yes. So they're on. Um, and I'm going to crack on with electrics next week. So I found a company that will provide a bypass for the alarm box. But first of all, before we start spending money on that, I was going to see if the blippers that I've got at home will disarm it. If they disarm it, then fantastic. Then the engine will start, because I've proven um, that the engine will turn on the key. Um, obviously, I can't start it because there's no diesel. So I think my first job next week is going to be to get the diesel line sorted out um, and then get the clutch hydraulic sorted out and then, yeah, we can get this thing, you know, in a better shape. Genuinely think we are getting there. I want to start this engine before I start doing the timing 
um, chain and work like that. I want to make sure it actually starts up so we've got a reliable baseline um, because obviously I know it starts, but I've, it's not started on this loom. I don't it does that. look much the same. It certainly looks a lot better than it did when it's had its two inch lift on it. They just look ungainly, like they're going to tip over. Um, get the bonnet back on this thing. It's going to be complete. It will look like a motor car again. I'm going to have a go at straightening this lot out down here. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. Um, it won't be pretty. I think what I'm going to try and do is to pull the dent from somewhere around here thump, and see if that makes a difference. Just need a self tapper in it and a slide hammer. I don't, the trouble is banging it from behind, you're just going to end up with the hammer marks like you've got here. It just, it's a mess. It needs pulling. Um, and being Burma Bright, it's incredibly soft. I might even be able to do it with a suction cup. I'll bring the suction cup back with me. Um, this wing mounting panel at the bottom is tie wrapped. Just to remind me, it is tie wrapped on because um, I need to drill holes through the panel that I welded onto the side of the bulkhead in order for the, the, the thing to fix. Really, I wanted it up in the air in order to do that. Um, uh, we've not lost any brake fluid, but the brake pedal is a little spongy. So I might try and re-bleed the brakes, but before I do that, I'm going to check the length of the push rod inside the servo unit here. It doesn't come up, the brake pedal doesn't come up when you pump it, which would indicate it's more likely to be the push rod. But I may need to bleed the brakes through again a second time. Um, that's about it, really. I've been looking through uh, electrics for the centre console and so forth, just for every single bulb. A bar one on the heater loom, the bit that goes over the heater controls in the middle of the dash. One bulb out of eight is working. The others are all blown. It's quite common for them to blow. Um, I did manage to salvage a wedge of bulbs out of this. Um, and they're similar. So I might be able to utilise those. I have ordered some because I want them in my car. I've got LEDs in my car, but the problem is LEDs are two directional. I don't mean two directional. They are two, as in T double O, directional, which means that you end up with bright spots on the panel rather than a nice, satisfying glow. Um, and then the other thing I'm going to do next week is going to get this um, dash centre rail sorted out. That's the one I need to chop the back end off it. Fashion it somehow that the fresh air vent still works, um, but it actually fits on the car. Well, I think for now, power off, thermals off, Getting the uh, blue Range Rover back off home. See my missus and boys. Can't wait. They're all over university this week. Woohoo!